This is Kimberly Quinn, host of the Minecraft podcast, and I can't tell you how much fun I have had doing this podcast. I, I started when the world closed over the pandemic in, a, in an attempt to spread some positivity out there and give people some strategies to enhance their own well-being and reduce anxiety and all that. Now, two years later, we're still going strong and now listened to by 52 countries across the world. And I've even helped some of my students get going with their own podcasts. It's super easy to do. And I'll tell you, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. I'll just explain for you. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It is a ball. Start today. Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another discussion. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I'm really excited to talk with you about uh, today, uh, talk with you today about the reason habits are so important, the reason habits matter. And we talked about this in the last couple episodes, and we're just going to even take it a bit further, because habits have so much to do with who we are. And my inspiration comes from James Clear, author of Atomic Habits. And James starts out right out of the gate saying identity change is the North Star of habit change. And I love that because I think I, I think we often, you know, don't think of it like that. You know, and then he, he says, you know, the, here's the, the big question is, right, the, like the, the, the moment of truth here is, are you becoming the type of person you want to become? This is what this is what James is asking. And then he says the first step is not what or how, but who. I know for myself when I was first reading this book, I thought, "Wow, I think we have that sort of backwards." But you know, before reading this book, I'm like, "Wow, I just I didn't think about this in this way." And it really shed a lot of light on the importance of getting a visual for who you'd like to become because I think we off, we often think that's so etched in stone. And then James says, uh, you need to know, you need to know who you want to be. You need to know who you want to be. He says, otherwise, your quest for change is like a boat without a rudder. I, I also really like how, how James talks about, you know, sort of like a, like a, a voting ballot or, or, you know, a vote box, casting your vote in a box, because he says each and every time we make a choice to perform an action, right? Each and every time we go in, this direction, that direction, or this direction, direction, and we and we we you know we we choose to act. He said, "It you take it's like it's like you drop a vote in the box for the type of person you wish to become." And I, gosh, I love that because it also there's a, a sense of you know how how they accumulate and help us to to build ourselves you know kind of brick by brick into who we want to be because uh, I think often we think. That you know, it is that we're etched in stone, and and though some of that, there's some truth to that with genetics, because you know the cards we're dealt certainly have a lot to do with who we become, you know, in that way. However, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of wiggle room to change how we identify our identity totally, and uh, in all sorts of ways. And he says that no single instance will transform your beliefs, but as the votes build up so does the evidence of your new identity. This is one reason why meaningful change does not require radical change. I love that. Meaningful change does not require radical change. It takes us back to that whole 1% thing we talked about last time. He said, small habits can make a meaningful difference by providing evidence of a new identity. And if a change is meaningful, it actually is big. That is so important, I think, for us to get. That's the paradox of making small improvements. And I know as mentioned, this last uh, episode, maybe the one before that, patience is not, a, you know, I, I, I had, the good Lord put through a lot of gifts into my gift bag when I was born onto this earth. And I'll tell you, patience was not one of those in the gift bag. I want everything yesterday. And so I certainly get how people can lose patience. You know, they get the, 
the treadmill, the, the, the you know, the Peloton, the this, the that, especially talk we talked about around, around New Year's Eve. Week three comes, you lost, you know, 0. 0.03 ounces or, you know, it's, instead of losing a half inch, you added one on and you're thinking, what's the point of this, right? And, and, and that, that was just a weight uh, example. But whatever example it is, day, days at the gym or money in the bank or whatever like that, and this comes up and that comes up and you had to buy new snow tires. And then, then you didn't, not only did you not save, but now you're in the red. So uh, I just know how frustrating that can be. And so it's, I, for me, it's kind of liberating that James Clear in his book, Atomic Habits, makes this, he sort of normalizes that, that we get frustrated and impatient. And that unfortunately, you know, the, the, the change actually is accumulating underneath, but we throw in the towel before it has a chance to, to kind of be visible. So he says with some examples here, and I love examples. He said, so putting this all together, you can see that habits are the path to changing your identity. The most practical way to change who you are is to change what you do. And then he's got four examples here. He says, each time you write a page, you are a writer. I'm going to stop right there because I do all kinds of, you know, positive self-talk to myself. Right there with that first sentence that James said, each time you write a page, you are a writer, and I am a writer. It's important to say that. I am a writer. Because, you know, imposter syndrome, as we all know, it, you know, uh, is very, very common where we don't really believe we're as good as, you know, the world is telling us or the, the publisher is telling us or the boss is telling us or our friends are telling us or whoever are telling us. So we can really combat that also when when we do you know, when we kind of, you know, make one small step in the right direction. So by writing one page, you're starting your, the children's book. You've ever, you've, you've wanted to write, you know, for two decades or whatever. And if you, you do an illustration, well, then you're, you, you're a, an author of a ch- children's book or you're an illustrator or both. He says, each time you practice the violin, you are a musician. Each time you start a workout, you are an athlete. That is what I say to myself a lot, actually. Each time you encourage your employees, you are a leader. And I really like that one because the leaders of the world with big L's and small L's are just so important. They make such a difference, such a difference in this world when they're good, good leaders, healthy, authentic leaders that uh, don't go, you know, in an unhealthy direction with power. When they're good people in positions of power, wow. I mean, things just get done and, and, and it makes a difference with people. And, uh, yeah, can move mountains like that. And, you know, we're not just talking about the results. It's kind of like, like I've said before, when we, like, when we find ourselves being resilient or if we're not confident, but we have a confident moment or whatever like that, it, it's kind of a deposit in the self-esteem bank. And so it's not different with really little itty bitty 1% changes in our habits. And James says that each habit not only uh, gets results, but also teaches you something far more important, important, far more important, which is to trust yourself. You start to believe you can actually accomplish these things. When the votes mount up and the evidence begins to change, the story you tell yourself begins to change as well. This is so freaking important. And so in a nutshell, and I have to tell you, I love this book, his book, Atomic Habits. I've I've gotten a lot of the way through it right now. And I, oh, I should give you an update on me. So my water habit, I'm actually sitting right here with my water bottle. My water habit, I was like two episodes ago, I think I mentioned this. My, our oldest son gave this to me along with this really like high-end yoga mat. It's a Lulu and some weights from my birthday and Christmas. And, um, and, I, and I'm, I've used them and I'm now I'm using them a lot because I have a whole workout regimen. And I also did a habit stacking thing with my water bottle, all this follows my gratitude journal. And I've, cons- I've been, this is the end of week two, and I have been very consistent with my 36 ounces of uh, water, which is, I'm actually on my third one now. So, so that I'm heading up into the, whatever that is with the math, 18 times three. And it's really, really working. I have to tell you though, I don't remember myself being thirsty so much as I am since I started drinking water. That's sort of weird. Uh, but the habit, this atomic habits thing is really working out. Habit stacking is a good thing. Okay, so anyway, this is all about the real reason why why habits matter right right here, okay? is because because of the, the direct relationship to who we are and what type of person we want to be. So 
to talk to wrap it up james says ultimately your habits matter because they help you become the type of person you wish to be they are the channel through which you develop your deepest beliefs about yourself quite literally you become your habits love it okay this is kimberly quinn signing off from the very beautiful northern vermont have a mindful day <laughs>